The story just keeps getting more and more heartbreaking, and every day it seems there are new videos being released, shedding more light on it. The most chilling is surveillance video from Joran's hotel on the night police say he had that fateful encounter with Stephanie Flores. In this just-released police video, investigators search through Joran Vandersloot's belongings. He calmly explains where he's been and what he's carrying. Investigators ask, where are your credit cards? In broken Spanish, Joran replies, I have them back in my hotel in Santiago. I went up to my room and I saw these things on the internet and I had to leave quickly. Investigators unzip his backpack and find a laptop, cash from various countries, and some photos. And then on the long drive back to Lima, he seems friendly with the officers. Authorities also released this other video, recorded a week ago by surveillance cameras at Joran's hotel in Lima. It shows him getting his room key at the front desk. And there, walking behind him, say police, is Stephanie Flores, her back to the camera. Moments later, upstairs, another camera captures them walking into Joran's room. This is the last time Stephanie is seen alive. Four hours later, Joran is seen leaving the hotel room alone, wearing a different shirt. He walks through the lobby, carrying a bag and a backpack, and out the front door. Stephanie's body is discovered in that hotel room three days later. Why did it take so long? Well, sources say Joran had prepaid for a two-week stay and demanded that no one, not even the hotel staff, enter his room. We tried to ask the hotel's management about that, but they refused to talk. This weekend, Joran arrives in Lima to a media frenzy. With police, he was composed and talkative. But now, as he's paraded three times in front of hundreds of journalists, he appears stunned, even frightened. You're on with ABC News. Can you tell us how you feel right now? He has nothing to say. Last night, ABC News spoke with Stephanie's father, Ricardo, as he tried to make sense of her brutal murder. The spirit and soul of my daughter is still with us, he says. I have four sons in body and a daughter in soul and spirit. A broken-hearted father left only with these final tragic images of his daughter. Ricardo Flores once ran for president of Peru and is also a popular race car driver. He told me that ever since she was a little girl, Stephanie has been his co-pilot, always by his side, both in the car races and in his life. That family is shattered, and yet he keeps saying, I hope Natalie Holloway's family can find some peace now that Joran is behind bars. Okay, George. John, thanks very much. We're now going to talk to a member of Natalie Holloway's family, her aunt Linda Allison in Memphis, also our ABC News consultant, former FBI Special Agent Brad Garrett in Washington. Welcome to you both. And, and, and Linda, I can only imagine what it's like for you to see those photos of Joran Vandersloot five years later. It just brings back the memories that we have dealt with for the last five years of knowing that he was twice arrested and then released. And it is some comfort knowing that he is now arrested and it looks like, based on the information that we've received in the news, that uh, he doesn't have an, uh, an alibi. There's not an out this time. Uh, based on the video camera, that doesn't lie. Yet he looks so calm. And he does have an arrogance about him. He seems to uh, be above the law. At least that's what our experience was when we were in Aruba. And of course, I saw a different look about him. Uh, one maybe a little bit more uh, intimidated or a little bit afraid when he was uh, actually brought in with the um, police vest on uh, that, you know, for his protection. So I think he realizes maybe the seriousness of it this time. Let's go through those tapes now. Thank you with our expert, Brad Garrett. And, and, and Brad, the first tape I want us to, to look at, I know you've reviewed them all, is that one showing Stephanie Flores, the hotel surveillance tape, showing her go into the room behind Yorin. Her father told us that is not the way my daughter walks. I think, George, what that's telling me is that she is conflicted for some reason in following him into the hotel. Clearly, there doesn't appear to be any duress going on. He's in front of her a couple of feet, takes the key, she follows him, but it's clear she's sort of stooped over and looking down. 
And, you know, this may be a new experience for her to go to a hotel room with somebody she met just a few hours later. And it also may play into her whole issue, apparently, with the sexual identity problems. Right. She said, she said that she was a lesbian, so there might have been some kind of shame or, or discomfort involved. Yes. Let's go to second piece of video, the morning video showing Yorin going out for um, getting bread and two cups of coffee at the shopping center across the street. Ninety minutes later, he, was, he had left the hotel. Could this be his way of trying to establish some kind of alibi, taking the two cups of coffee? Maybe, George, but I'm, I'm more inclined to think that that the homicide has not occurred yet and he's still engaging her he's still oh. having a, a relationship with her in that room and then something goes terribly wrong in that next 90 minutes she ends up being killed and then he casually as you can see leaves the hotel so you think as you see him here this is a man who hasn't yet uh, potentially committed a murder, but that would suggest, and you, you sort of hit on it there, that this was not necessarily very premeditated, that he snapped. I, I think, George, that you're looking at a kid who lives on the margins, clearly an antisocial personality. He is somebody that does not want to held a, be accountable for his behavior, and he gets into these situations, and his anger and rage takes over. Let's say, for example, she rejected him sexually some way, and he just couldn't deal with that, and he went off. And he actually just, and perhaps did the same thing with, with Natalie Holloway. And as a result, now he's ended up with a dead person. And what is he going to do? He casually packs up, puts on his backpack, changes his clothes, and walks out of the hotel and goes to a different country. Like, I'm just going to walk away from this and everything's going to be okay. Finally, we only have a few seconds left. But what do you make of his demeanor in the interrogation videos? George, he's trying to manipulate the investigators. In other words, if he could... He believes he can talk his way out of just about anything. And as long as he continues to, to be cordial and engaging with them, he believes that he might be able to change the situation. Okay, Brad, Garrett, Linda, Allison, thank you both very much.